G'day curd nerds, welcome to another cheese video. This one's an educational one again. And this time we're gonna talk about cheese boards or cheese platters and what you should put on them. Or, well, what I think you should put on them anyway. As you can see, I've got four cheeses here. Really, I don't think you should have any more than that on your cheese platter because you're just gonna confuse people's taste buds and give them far too much selection. Uh, and it's obviously when you're challenged, it's just like going to the supermarket, when you see all the same product, but all these different brands, it confuses the heck out of you. Anyway, you wanna keep it nice and simple. So no, no more than four pieces of cheese on your platter. Obviously, we're going to try for different flavours and textures in the cheese platter. So, on this selection that I have here, we've got a, a mould ripened cheese. This one's a King Island, King Island Dairy Folks Cove Camembert style. Uh, so, it's a white mould cheese. We've also got from King Island Dairy, this one's Roaring Forties Blue, a nice strong blue um, that's actually in wax. I think they put the wax on afterwards. But it's a nice blue cheese. So total contrast to the smooth creaminess of the camembert, the blue cheese gives the cheese platter a bit of a bite. Also, you want something with maybe some bits in it. <laughs> and by bits, this one is a, uh, a cheddar infused with jalapenos and honeycomb. It also looks like it's got black peppers in it. Let's have a look. Yes, it does. It has black peppers in it as well. Uh, peppercorns, I should say. So that'll give it a little bit of a zing, different flavor texture. And then I've got a uh, vintage red Leicester. So something, a little bit of different color. So we've got some blue, some white, some red, and a, uh, a cheese with bits in it, if that makes sense. So that's kind of what I look for. Sometimes I'll go for the same sort of thing. So the red Leicester is kind of a cheddar-y style. It's got a cheddar -y flavor. And I'll offset that with a uh, washed rind cheese, a stinky cheese. Um, beautiful flavor inside, smooth and gooey. Uh, the gooier the better, I think. Um, Kim wouldn't agree with me, but yeah. Uh, it's a nice, balanced, different styles of cheese, different textures, different tastes. Don't get all cheddar, if that makes sense. Different flavors of cheddar. Don't go for all soft cheeses. So you should really mix up have four unique different styles of cheese, and that'll ha be a very, uh, it's a, it'll complement each other. Though. All the cheeses will complement each other. And there'll be a little bit of something for everybody on at the party or whatever you're serving it up for. Not everybody likes camembert, not everybody likes blue. So there'll be a little bit of cheese for everybody. So that's how I put together a cheese board. Sorry, they're not my own cheeses, but the cheese cave is uh, fairly empty because we gave away most of the pieces of cheese that I've made recently. Uh, so I've had to buy some commercial ones and they are some good quality commercial ones. Uh, so that's what you're looking for. If you can get artisan cheese, uh, then all the better. Uh, the, some of the supermarket brands are a little bit like dish water, uh, but these ones here I know from experience are absolutely delicious. So don't forget, curd nerds, that when you serve up your cheese platter, make sure that the cheeses come up to room temperature. So room temperature can be anything between 21 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees. You can have it outside, but don't have your cheese sitting in the blaring sun because it'll weep uh, fat out of the cheese and it won't taste very nice. So room temperature, serve it indoors, about 21 degrees Celsius. Uh, it can be lower, that's okay, but don't have it cold out of the fridge because the flavors won't be the same. Once you let it sit at room temperature for about 30 minutes to an hour, then you'll find that the flavor of the cheese is just so much better. So what do you serve your cheese platter with? Well, if you're having a party like we are, then it's a COVID party. So it's only me and Kim and Ben, and we're not gonna eat it all. But it's, you, you, you have a bit of everything. So not only have we got the cheese board that we talked about before, we've, so we've got some grapes, we've got some pears, some apples and some strawberries. Obviously we've got the cheese, we've got some cherry tomatoes, we've got some stuffed bell peppers, and nice and spicy hot, some black olives. Uh, we've got some uh, sun, semi-sun-dried tomatoes. 
Some gherkins of all things, they're lovely too. We've got some of Gav's Persian feta that you've seen on the channel before. A pane de cassa bread loaf that's been sliced, goes lovely with all these oils and stuff to dip in and eat stuff with. Bit of tzatziki. We've got some pickled onions, little small cocktail ones, very nice indeed. Got a selection of meats, we've got some, oh, what's that called, prosciutto, I think it is, yes. We've got some uh, salami and some uh, suppresso, uh, hot suppresso and uh, some twiggy sticks. And we've got some, something with a bit of crunch, which is a, um, uh, what are they called? Beetroot chips. Ah, uh, mm, mm, went everywhere, yum. So, as I said, you can select anything you like for your charcuterie board, I think it's called. Uh, but yeah, if you're just serving up the cheese by itself, like I said before, nice balanced cheeses, different types, different textures, different flavours. Uh, a little bit of something for everybody in case they don't like a certain piece of cheese. Anyway, thanks again for watching, Curd Nerds. Really appreciate you tuning in as always. Uh, if you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. And click that little bell button so you get notified of when I release some cheesy videos. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.